Today we're going to learn how to set up and record with the Tascam DR40. I'll also go over how to adjust the preferred settings that should be in place as well as transferring and accessing files from the device to your laptop slash desktop. Let's get started. Before we turn on the DR40, let's take a look at the left side of the device. Here, the line out is for your headphones. EXT in or extension in is to switch between XLR inputs on the bottom and the external microphones on top. There are three options, line, mic, and mic plus phantom. Since we're using XLR inputs on the bottom of the recorder, we want this button moved all the way to the left above the option line. The hold button when switched to the left will lock the device while off or on and will prevent all functions from working. This is a great function when you're traveling or have the device put away and would like to prevent it from turning on and wasting battery life while the recorder is off. Move the button to the left to disable all buttons and move the button to the right to enable all buttons. For this recording, we'll move the button to the right. Lastly, the input level decreases and increases the sensitivity of the input on the mics on top or XLRs on the bottom. We'll cover this later and what level it should be on. On the bottom of the recorder, we have two XLR inputs, left and right. We'll connect the male end of the cables into these inputs. If at any time you'd like to disconnect the cables, just push the silver button here and pull the end piece of the cable. The EXT mic slash line in for mics with the 2.5 millimeter jack. This input is also used for an external remote accessory that is sold separately from the recorder. Here we have a diagram of how all the connections should be. The headphones will connect into the input found on the side top left of the recorder. You will see a small headphone icon above it. The male end of the cable for the mic will connect into input L, also known as track 1. The female end of that same cable will be connected to the bottom of the mic. Once these connections are made, you can switch the on button found on the mic. Input R, also known as track two, will connect the male end of the cable into the recorder and the 3.5 millimeter jack into the headphone input of your mobile phone. Before turning on the device, let's go over the main function keys for recording and navigating. The top three icons are a square, a sideways triangle, and a red circle. The square serves as the on and off, home, and stop button. You could exit any menu or prompt by pressing home. The play button will play back files which we'll see later, and the record button previews audio levels and records. We'll go over that soon. Under these three buttons are keys that will help us navigate on the LCD screen. The plus and minus keys will also lower and increase the volume level in your headphones, but will also help navigate up and down while in the menus or selecting choices. The left and right buttons will navigate left and right in the menus or selecting choices. These keys will also allow you to rewind and fast forward with playback files. The very center is the enter key. Push this button to choose a selection. Menu on the top left will take us to the menu where we could explore different functions and features of the recorder. The quick key allows us to delete, divide, auto divide, level align, and mix down tracks. We will use this feature only to delete unwanted tracks. Mixer on the bottom right will allow us to control the audio levels of input L, track 1, and input R, track 2. Using the plus, minus, left, and right keys will allow us to go up, down, left, and right. The PB, CONT button at the bottom left is used in playback to speed up or speed down the tone of voice in the track. We don't need to worry about this feature, so we'll leave it as is at X 1.0. Now we're ready to turn on the Tascam. 
To turn on the recorder, press and hold the home button. I have already set the settings to where they should be, but let's make sure they haven't been changed to the default for some odd reason. First, we'll check the record settings. To do this, press the menu button. You should see a list of options. At the very top is REC settings. Make sure this is highlighted and press enter. The settings should look like the display on the right of the screen. If for whatever reason they don't match up with the LCD screen, use the navigating keys to make the proper changes. Once all the settings are in place, push the home button. Next, we'll check the REC mode. You will find the REC mode above the record button. Push it once and it will prompt you to the REC mode screen. These settings should also look like the display on the right of the screen. If they don't match up with the LCD screen, use the navigating keys to make the proper changes. Once all the settings are in place, push the home button. Before we begin to preview audio and record, let's take another look at our diagram and make sure we have all our connections in place. Now that our connections are in place, we can start to preview and set the audio levels. Press the record button once and it should start to blink. The blinking should let you know it's on preview. We'll proceed by pressing the mixer key that will allow us to adjust each track's audio level. The way we have set up this recording, your audio will be on track one. Make sure your microphone is on and speak into it as you will for the interview. After the track one knob is highlighted, press enter and the volume box will appear on the top right of the screen. Make sure the level is within the range of the orange arrows. To raise or lower the volume, use the plus and minus keys. When you've set the level, press enter, then home. Before we adjust track two, which is connected to the phone, we will call the guests using the mobile Hangouts app. Select the Hangouts app. Once inside, you will see this screen with the text box highlighted in green. This is for text messages, but we want to make a call, so press the phone icon so it highlights in green. When the phone icon is in green, you will see this screen. Push this button to bring up the dial pad. Enter the caller's phone number beginning with the area code. Once the number is entered, then press the dial button. Hangouts will then begin to call but will first ask for your permission to access the microphone. Press OK. Once you have audio, you can lower or raise the volume of the caller by using the volume button on the phone. This should adjust the level properly but if necessary, you can use the mixer feature on the task cam to adjust track two to the proper level. The next step is only if you need to make an extra adjustment to track two. If audio for track two is already within the suggested range, skip the next step. To make an extra adjustment, press the mixer tab. Use the minus key to go down and push the right key to highlight. Press enter and the level box will appear on the top right of the screen. Use the plus and minus key to set the audio in the suggested range. When finished, press enter, then home. Now that our levels are set, we could record. Press the record button and the red light should be solid and not blinking as shown here. When we look at the LCD screen, you will see a circle on the top left, which means audio is recording. And on the top right, you will see a timer that counts down, letting you know how much time is left on the recording in hours, minutes, and seconds. When you're ready to stop recording, just press the home button and the red light around the recording button should light off.
Tascam made playing back files really simple by using the play, stop, forward and back keys. Press the play button to begin playback and the forward and back keys to skip between tracks. If you have a particular track you'd like to fast forward or rewind in, just press and hold forward or rewind in that one track. To end playback at any time, simply push the stop slash home button. To transfer files, first turn off the Tascam by pressing and holding the home button. This will prevent the card from being corrupted and damaging the files. Turn the Tascam on its side, open the small slot with the lip, push the SD card, and it will release the card for removal. If you look on the side of your laptop and iMac, there should be a slot for your SD card. Another way to transfer files is with the USB cord found in the Tascam box. Turn the Tascam right side up and connect the small end of the USB cord. Connect the bigger end into your laptop or iMac USB port. The LCD screen should then display USB select, bus power and storage. Use the center console by pressing down to select storage, then press enter. You should now see USB connected. Once you have completed one of the two previous steps, an icon labeled DR40 will appear on your desktop. When you see the icon, double click on it and you will see folders inside. Double click the music folder and all the recorded Tascam files should be in this location. To preview these audio files, press the spacebar on your keyboard or double click each file one at a time. To transfer any or all of these files, you could simply drag and drop from the folder to the desktop or other desired location. Once you are ready to delete files, you could do so by accessing each track by using the forward and back keys as done in playback mode. While skipping tracks, you will see this number change and when you have found the track you'd like to delete, press the quick tab. You will see a sub menu with the option to delete. Follow the prompts by pressing enter to delete or press the home button to cancel at any time. Another way to delete files is by connecting the SD card or USB cord into your laptop or computer. Once you have opened the music folder and have decided which tracks are no good, you can drag and drop those files to the recycling bin. This will clear space on the SD card. Well that's it for this training video. Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoy recording with your Tascam DR40.